In one of his conversations with Peter, Jesus said to Peter, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. He, he said, literally, you're not minded like God, you're minded like a man. That seems unfair because Peter was a man. He wasn't God. So how could he possibly have the mind of God? And yet all throughout the New Testament, we hear, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. Set your mind on things above. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds or be renewed in the spirit of your mind so that you will be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And so clearly, while it may seem impossible to us, it is possible to have the mind of Christ, to think like he thinks, and to have his attitudes and his dispositions. But how? What the Holy Spirit does for us is transmit the mind that was in Christ into us. So that the very same Spirit that empowered Jesus to think the way that he thought is now living in us, the same Spirit, not another one, and he is giving us the power to think the thoughts of Jesus. But how does he do that? We identified four ways that he does it. One is to remind us of things Jesus said and to call them forward at the appropriate time so we understand them. So we're in the middle of a situation and the Holy Spirit causes us to remember a verse that we've already memorized, but we didn't know how it worked. Now in this new situation, we can see how that verse of Jesus has meaning, and we understand it more than ever. Another one of these ways <clears throat> is to show us. The Holy Spirit models the life of Christ in the different people that are around us, inside your company, your team, this church or another, the Holy Spirit puts the virtues of Christ on display in other people so that when you see them, you admire them and you want them for yourself. Third, the Holy Spirit convicts us. He proves us wrong. He says things that are hard to hear, if you will, he offends us from time to time by showing us where we were wrong about Christ or about our own selves or the way that we treated other people. And if we'll listen to him instead of always fight and defend ourselves, he will actually give us the mind of Christ. And finally, the Holy Spirit leads us. He pulls us into places we would not go on our own that seem unsafe or far outside of our capacity. And then once we're there, he shows up. He shows us how Christ is present in those places and we can learn new things. We make it hard for the Spirit to teach us because we have our own ways of resisting this. We're either too easily bored or we compete with people that have these great virtues or we defend ourselves every time he convicts us or we complain whenever he takes us into new experiences. But if we would be quiet and listen to what the Spirit is saying instead of resisting him at every turn, God would give us the mind of Christ. So this week, as you go back to work now and meet others in your offices and on your teams, go knowing that you already have the mind of Christ. You need only let it work through you.